I love winter flying. I don't particularly care for all of the prep work to make it possible, but I love winter flying. Your day frequently starts with snow removal, both shoveling and blowing. It's not uncommon to have your hangar door frozen shut. These sliding doors work well in the summer and less so in the winter. Adding five gallons to the left tank, I use a jiggle pump so I don't have to carry and hold the weight of the jerry can. Before each flight, fuel samples are taken from the bottom of both tanks. Water is heavier than avgas, so if there's any present, it'll show up here. This is also the time to check for any dirt or debris in the fuel. Each control surface connection and hinge on all control surfaces need to be checked prior to flight. Both static ports on the fuselage need to be checked to ensure they're clear. The elevator lead counterweights need to be checked to ensure that they are secure. I had one come loose one year and it was rubbing against the horizontal stabilizer, potentially causing an in-flight control surface jam, which could have been fatal. Here, one of the two elevator control connections are being inspected. One more elevator lead counterweight being inspected. Checking the strobe element. The pitot tube. And the propeller for any nicks and cracks. Oil level looks good. Fuel level checked for quantity and quality. From my experience, I know that the quantity seen here is approximately one hour and 45 minutes in this tank alone. Installing my tablet in the aircraft. This tablet is used to display VFR navigational charts, airport information, and IFR geo-referenced approach plates. Time to remove the preheater. This pumps hot air into the engine cowling through the fiberglass opening for the two exhaust pipes. I have used it for years. It warms the entire engine, not just the oil pan. The cement floor is extremely slippery in the winter, which makes it that much harder to pull these sliding doors closed with their rollers running in congealed oil. Well, weather's starting to deteriorate. It's not uncommon to do all of this work and then not go flying. That's sort of par for the course. Not looking very good. All right. Hey, handsome. How you doing? Oh, getting uh, Maybe. just yeah. Come on in. All right. Uh, here, put this outside so you can go it on top of you. I'll have to plug in my cell phone. It's dying too. So. Okay. Hmm, visibility kind of went for a shit, eh? Yeah, how do you feel about a circuit? <laughs> you think we can get one in? <laughs> well, if we can find the runway, I'm sure we can do a circuit. <laughs> um, when you get a chance on your phone, yep. take a look at Smith Falls Notam. I can't figure it out. The one runway that you can't land on, 24. Well, it's got one, it makes sense. one of them says uh, it's closed for the runways, 0624 is closed for snow clearing. And I can't figure out the time on it, uh, like the date time stamp. Okay. It, it seems weird. Uh, and the second one is uh, runway 24 is not approved. I know, but 06 is. How does that make sense? I don't know. Good thing. <laughs> okay. Uh, it's Am I getting feet. forward? Yeah. Just pull the seat, my, my seat, my seat back. No, it's my seat back. Oh, let me, let me pull it forward. Yeah. Sure. I got your seat. What is yeah? What a stupid hobby. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you can close the canopy whenever you're ready. Yeah, I got my arm outside right now. But yeah, other fine. than that, <laughs> <laughs> what are we doing? Uh -huh. Yep. Uh, yeah. uh, you're looking pretty good. Uh, let me just pull this hood up in the middle of it. Yeah, that's that'll give me the slack I need. There you go. There we are. Better. You're skinnier. I just lost 30 pounds. Yeah. Amazing. 
All right, we're good. We'll see if uh, this thing's gonna run, and if not, then uh, we just go for lunch. <laughs> we just go. We go present position, direct the gyms. Oh, dear. oh crap, my keys. Oh no! <laughs> oh no! Where are they? In the hangar? Uh, no, no, no! I think they're here. <laughs> oh, I hope. Please be here, because I don't want to unbuckle. I. Uh... Please be here. Uh, yay! Okay. Okay. Thank goodness they're not in the hair. Yeah. Or in this pocket. That'd be even worse. Yeah. <laughs> you have yeah. to get into that pocket, forget it. I do that all the freaking time. Yep. Thank goodness for patch pockets. At least you can access them with a seatbelt on. Okay, so... Oh, we have what? a round robin uh, developed here. Yeah, I did. Cool. Yeah, I awesome. followed the flight plan and everything. Oh, cool. <laughs> that ain't gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> we will see. Uh, I'm gonna start with uh, seeing if this runs. Yeah. So I've got. Let's uh, start with a start. Yeah, <laughs> I've got the all the cylinder head temperatures above 50 Fahrenheit, so we're above zero. That's great. Yep. I had it plugged in for two hours, so. Uh, with your uh, blower. Yeah. The heater blower. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Circuit breakers are good. Toes are on brakes. Uh, oil pressure cold. I think not, seeing as it's minus 20. Uh, I'll turn that off for now. That off. Yep. So we'll keep. Yeah, we'll keep that out today. Carpet, good. Mixtures, all right, okay, good. All right. Let's... Throttle. Master switch is on. Well, sounds of life. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I got 12.9. That's great. Things are looking good. Uh, okay. Where am I here? Electric fuel pump on. Oh, that's encouraging. That is encouraging. Prime is required. Okay, let's take a look at the liters per hour. Okay, we've got fuel in there for sure. Okay. Number three EGT is offline. Big surprise. <laughs> uh, both tanks are completely, have lots in them. They're not full, but they're both uh, probably Special. two hours aside or 145 aside. Yep. Okay, prop area clear. Do you see anybody out there? Well, I can't see anything. <laughs> Jeez. You're kidding, right? We're all fogged up. <laughs> Stop breathing. <laughs> yeah, okay. Let's see what she does. Let's see if she's got enough juice to go. here so am i still on the taxiway uh apparently we haven't hit any solid objects yet so that's our probably a good thing yeah we got to get these windows better than this maybe if i crack this or something just get a little bit of air or something moving yeah that will either help or uh, it'll probably help yeah Put that moisture off the uh... well if you'd stop breathing yeah i can't see a thing look at this Man, are my feet cold. These boots just suck. Really? Oh, yeah. I know we'll get heat in flight, but we have to actually get to flight to get, you gotta get heat. You got to get to, yeah. Okay. How close is my wingtip to that snowdrift? Uh, you're, it's below you, and you're a good uh, three or four feet away. You're oh, okay. All right. Here, here's where. Aircraft into the wind, area clear behind, toes on brakes. Fuel selector the fullest tank. I'm on the left tank now. About okay. over 59 liters in that tank. So is that number three EGT going to come online at some point? No. Oh, oh, well, but, yeah, when we're done flight, it'll pop on. <laughs> <laughs> when we're done, <laughs> remove after flight. 
Well, I'd like a little more defrost than what we have. Uh, yeah. Master switch on, fuel pump on. Landing lights on, strobes are on. Fuel select to the fullest tank, mixture all the way rich. It is now engine gauges. We have 100 degrees. Controls full and free. It's on the runway. Yeah, is that your leg? You are yeah. good? Yep. Okay. On prior traffic, whiskey kill the zero attacks. We also backtrack for departure runway one zero. Be a right turn out. Yeah, I can see most of the runway now. I mean, I can't see on my left or my right, but I can see the runway part. That's reasonably clear on my side. Well, that's good. Yep. Okay, you have the control. I uh, know. <laughs> I wonder what my rotate speed is. <laughs> you're asking me? <laughs> Man, if you're asking me, we're in trouble. <laughs> well, you spend so much time flying the thing, eh? And yeah. It's all feel. Watch it, Joey. Yeah, we're already doing uh, 60, 55, 60 knots. It's there flying. There Looks like it was uh, 63 knots. You uh, lapped off the runway. Yeah. We're dropping the flaps. All right, we're at uh, 93 knots, 100 knots now. We're, we're 105 knots. Just trimming the aircraft a little bit. Defrost is starting to work. All right, I'm going to bring on a little bit of cabin heat because There's that's a good idea. something that I'd like to do. We're doing 130 knots in the climb. Oh, you feel that warm air. That's nice. That is really that's nice. nice. Yeah. Let's do a scan of things here, Don. Oil pressure is really good. Oil temperature is good. Carb temperature is a little on the cold side. But we'll, we'll, uh, I'm uh, going to hog the heat for myself right now before we uh, decide Carb to... Uh, 34. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Arm prior whiskey kill us here. Just off when we want to in the right turn southbound. You gonna do a touch and go, Tom Bell, or just gonna no, go? No, no. You need prior permission, and yeah. it's, it's not a. I don't. Think, I think it's a ski airport. I'm diverting some heat now, buddy. The carb? Yeah, we're at 28. We're below zero, so I'll uh, just warm it up a little bit. Then I'll give us some more heat. That's fair. Okay, let's uh, punch this in, shall we? Go for it. Perfect. And, uh, and hit waypoint button again. All right. Second one is. Smith Falls, C-Y-S-H. Uh, another one? Yep. After that, we're going to C-R-L-2. Oh. Been there. Yep. Yep. And then, uh, Charlie November Alpha 9. So, i uh, looking good to me, so we'll execute, say enter, and we'll go to our first place is there. Yep. Um, direct. To November Romeo 6. Done. And that's going to take us through that airspace, so I'd have to first talk to a uh, center. Uh, yeah. We're already up at 35. Let's punch in 27-7. Uh, uh, center, it's uh, Golf Whiskey Kilo Sierra. Golf Whiskey Kilo Sierra, I'll have it to an off-clock in it. Whiskey Kilo Sierra is level 3500, uh, just outside your airspace. And, uh, We'd like to go present position direct to uh, Carlton Place. We're on the uh, uh, CFR flight plan this morning, Carlton Place, Smith Falls, uh, West Port, and back to our front. Whiskey Kilo Sierra, you're identified. That, that is approved. The altimeter is 3020. And uh, when you have a second squad code of 4532. 4532, and altimeter 3020. Whiskey Kilo Sierra. Okay. So we are just coming up over top of Westport at uh, 4.5. We've only talked to... Uh, no? <laughs> <laughs> We've only talked to one helicopter, eh? Uh, Transfer, yeah. Transport 869. And uh, 2,000 feet below us. There's nobody else out here. The visibility is starting to kind of go, uh. Yeah, it's not great. Yeah. But uh, certainly viable. Oh, yeah. But yeah, it's crappy over there. And much less crappy over there. So, yeah. So we're about to make a right turn. Uh, that sounds complicated. <laughs> to a heading of... That's incorrect. It's not 216. It's 316. I'm pretty damn sure that uh, it, That would be a 316. Yeah, it's, yeah, there's a right turn being executed in 42 seconds. So I'll just go over to here. Okay. Heading... Dial in 316, so that was a typo on my part. And we're 30 seconds to the turn. We're now over top of Westport. We're going to be heading, you know, Don, the visibility it's improved. It's just over here. It's just a very, very light. Yeah, it's, it was here, and now it's there. Yeah, we actually flew past it. So we're now in the right turn. Roger that. And definitely it's cooled off in here a little bit. 
So uh, Don and I pulled the pin on Tomville because uh, it was starting to look IFR-ish. Uh, yeah. And uh, in that event, we did just load in the RNAV uh, 10 because our visibility is now down to seven miles. Probably seven miles, yeah. Yeah. So we're present position direct uh, the RNAV 10 by a Kiob, and we're on a descent right now down to 3,500, and our visibility, as you can see, is dropping very quickly now. Yeah. So our visibility now is down to maybe two miles, and we're at 3,900 feet, sending to uh, 3,500 feet. We're still not completely sure what this is. I can only guess it's snow, eh? I think it's a very, very light snow, snow flurries. All right, we got the approach plate. Uh, let's bring up the approach plate and start reviewing it. Um, let's just go to Yoink. All right, and let's go to uh, procedures. procedures. Thank you, RNAV-10. RNAV-10. Yeah, we're off the map right now, but we're heading in the right direction. Yep. Okay, so what is the is now, I'd call it about five miles. Yeah, it's five getting, miles and A's. Yeah, it's getting a bit better. So not below 840 feet. So we'll, we'll put the bug for 900. Yeah, yeah. We're on the map. On the map. Okay. Yeah. That's good. Okay, so we'll probably live, eh? <laughs> yeah. On road traffic, Gulf Sierra Tele Bravo, two miles south of Timong Lake at 2,500 on road to Lynn. Well, that was shit for a couple of seconds there. It was not looking good. Yeah. It, uh, you know, the nice thing about that, Don, is though, when you have the IFR, you have that IFR training. Well, it's also really nice having an autopilot. So you can, you know. No, autopilot. it's all me, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, autopilot's flying the airplane, you can... Okay, we're, we are we are now up. approaching screaming VFR. Like, that shit's behind us. Yeah, now we're back to... Uh, what, 20 miles? Oh yeah, at least 20 miles. Maybe 30 miles? Lots, lots of visibility. And like, a few minutes ago, uh, behind us is shit. Yeah, not good that way. Short final on the RNAV runway 1-0. Uh, right now, oh, it's dropped, look at this. Uh, drop from, oh my gosh, it's now a headwind. We had a 30 knot change in what, 500 feet? That would account for the wind shear that we were uh, feeling a little Lake bit. Pro. Okay, here, let's go on here, you hold it, buddy. Yep, I got it. All right. Okay, I gotta pull the power back. Gonna do some uh, flying stuff? Yeah. Okay. I feel like I'm going way too fast. I have the airplane disengaged. Gonna pull her back. Get some flaps down as soon as I can do it. <laughs> what an interesting flight. It really was. And I might do an overshoot here, depending if I get this airspeed. Because I'm still too fast there, buddy. 87 knots flap speed? Yeah, I'm going to, uh, rather than, I'll, I'll go around. Yeah. And on prior rates, the Golf Whiskey Killer Sierra. We're on the overshoot uh, for runway 10. We'll do uh, one circuit left hand and be uh, coming in 10. What a wind shear, eh? Holy shit. That would explain that bouncing around we had uh, coming into the field. I'm on the right tank. I got 50 plus liters in that tank. We're on the overshoot. That was Delta Pop Echo? Yeah. And Delta Pop Echo, just an FYI, uh, as we descended uh, through 2,500 feet uh, to uh, circuit height, we had a wind shear of about 30 knots. Uh, 20. 26 knots on the nose, it swung around about 13 on the tail. Roger that, thanks for the heads up, Delta Pop Echo. That was wild. That was something, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll try to do a better approach this time and actually bring it in. So we're going to try to get this thing down into, uh, you know, the last time you and I did that IFR, we did it with the flaps down, and we dragged the aircraft in, do you remember that? Yep. And this one we came in too fast, but I also, I had the speed up because of the tailwind. Like I, you know, sure enough, it swung. Yeah, that was pretty wild. That was wild. Yeah. Okay, I got 100 knots. A little bit of everything today. Yeah, the visibility went to shit. And yeah, a couple times. Right? And I don't know what the heck hit us over there, that wind. <laughs> I have no idea.
But it was uh, sure bouncing around good. Well, it has to be significant if you feel it in this thing. And it was... Because this doesn't have any wings. Yeah. But it was very localized, right? It was very short period, but it was uh, fairly intense. Armbrier, Whiskey, Kill is here. Left base, turning final, one zero full stop. And our prior traffic, Cessna 150, Delta Bob Echo, are currently at 1,500 feet uh, to the northeast of the field. We will be passing through the south, flying overhead for full stop 1-0, Arm Prior. We have our flaps, we have our gear, we have our fuel pump on, we have our landing on, we have our strobes on. Cool. 80 knots. This looks a little better than the last approach. This looks strong and doable. Wind is all over the place, I'm watching it here. It's changing directions. Yeah, I was uh, caught my eye too. It's uh, the right quartering. Oh, uh, okay. Perfect. Coming around to a headwind. We've done that before. Well, what you do is you, you let all the air out of your tires and it makes all your landings look good. <laughs> Bullshit. Yeah, bullshit. That was good. Very nice. What a great flight. And talk about a mixed bag of it shit. It was a real mixed bag of shit. Absolutely. Yeah. No, we had to do a missed approach. Oh, we didn't have to, but that was the right call. Yeah, oh yeah, for sure. And what a, a doubt to go around. 30 knot wind shear on final. And I'm not sure what the heck threw us around over there. And I'm still... Look at the altimeter's bang on. So that was so weird. That was weird, man. Because I felt 25,000 feet too low. Yeah. 2,500 didn't look like 2,500. No. Unless there's hills over there, and that's uh, and that's why that the sector is 29. That, that could be. Because I, I felt like we were... Like, what did we... I think we came in around 26 or something, and I felt like we were, well, close. It looked like we were about 1,000 feet above the ground. Yeah. And I'm going to kill this thing now. Roger that. 